Pembroke Hospital. As a physician. I suspect you'll not find a better post of employment to contemplate your uh, predicament. This is sudden. I yeah. was returning home to see my sickly mother. But alas, that was before contracting this... affliction. Dr. Reed, take a moment to consider. The post would be for the night shift, providing a good explanation for your absence during daylight hours. You'll be adequately reimbursed, and have a place to hide. I even had the forethought to bring some clean clothes. Right. So, what do you say? It seems I have little choice, but yours is a generous offer, so I thank you. Brilliant! Oh, Jonathan, this is one for the book, and the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Doctor Swans, whatever you call him. I don't bloody know. Super frog. Hmm, <laughs> frog on steroids. An angry frog. <laughs> Doctor Swansea, thank goodness, I was beginning to be concerned. Worry no more, Nurse Crane. I bring good news. Liverpool Short one last night. What a game. Oh, uh, and Dorothy? Yes, Doctor. Doctor Reed here has just returned from the front. He served King Country. He will be joining us here at Pembroke. Very lucky to have gained a surgeon of his talent. One so experienced in blood transfusions. Rest in peace, Jerry Rafferty. So Jerry Marsden and the pacemakers, Lou Marsden. We haven't. It's only thanks to Nurse Crane and the staff that our ship doesn't sink. If you have any questions, you just ask her. <coughs> Your assistance is required, Dr. Swansea, immediately. Come on, Jonathan. We'll catch up after my night. Come in, Nurse Crane. I'm coming. But you are, you dirty boy. Welcome, welcome, we go. I will not take another life. 
bed and sleep with new staff members, no matter how illustrious they may be. I found a wounded man by the docks. He answers to the name of Clay Cox. He requires urgent medical attention. Already making the rounds? That's the Pembroke spirit. I'll ask our porter, Milton, to bring him back immediately. Thank you, nurse. What can I do for you? Dr. Swansea insisted we provide you a quiet office. You'll find it on the second floor with your name on the door. Thank you. Nurse Crane, isn't it? Yes, Dorothy Crane. Welcome to Pembroke Hospital, Dr. Reed. Your office has been prepared. I would like to ask a few questions first. What kind of man is Dr. Swansea? Well, you accepted the job from him. I thought you would have known about your employer. It's right to assume Dr. Swansea knows far more about me than I do about him. You'll get to know him soon enough, and better than me. The administrator has better things to do than mix with us. Apologies, I've only just met him but once. This is sudden. <coughs> I've only just returned to England. Dr. Swansea is a brilliant surgeon and the most compassionate physician. And Mr. Hampton, the patient we brought in. How does he fare? I gave him a sedative to help him sleep. Poor thing was in quite a state of shock. Thank you, Nurse Crane. Good evening, sir. So it is true. The famous Dr. Reed has joined us. I can't think of any better news during these terrible times. Do we know each other? Actually, yes. We met once before at the Rockefeller University in New York. Dr. Tippett's, yes, I remember. I was assisting Professor Carell in his research about coronary bypasses. He had nothing but praise for you. He was also very confident about your future. And look at you now. Eminent surgeon and blood transfusion specialist. What can you tell me about the staff in the hospital? Some are really good and others are not so good. But during this troubled period, there is no time for slander. I prefer to focus on the positive character traits. Tell me more about cherished people, then. Nurse Branigan is a pearl. She is the most helpful and dedicated nurse I've ever worked with. A clever and cheerful woman. You really seem to admire her skills. I'll go even further. If she was a man, she would be a damn fine practitioner. Any opinion about the management? I don't always agree with Dr. Swansea's reserve, but I must admit he does all he can to keep this facility running during this crisis. Ah, yes, the burden of command. I was fed up with this concept while serving as a medical officer. Don't get me wrong. Swansea's a good administrator. I just wish he would get out of his office down again. What is the Pembroke Hospital situation? And please, speak freely. This hospital is not exactly the best of London. I'm sure you are used to working in a better environment. It's more than enough. In any case, the personnel of a hospital are much more important to me than the building. Don't be misled by appearances, Dr. Reed. This hospital does not lack talented people. It just lacks hope. Goodbye, Dr. Tippett. Right. This place seems perfect to conduct my research.
opinion, sir. <coughs> I'm Dr. Reed. May I help you? I don't know if a third opinion is needed. Your colleagues are already arguing about my condition. I see. Would you mind telling me more about your situation? I'm Harvey Fiddick. All I want is to get me bloody arm fixed properly. Tell me about the doctors who are arguing about your case. Strickland and Ackroyd. They both want the best for me, but there's a lot of pride there. Doctors are no different from carpenters, it seems. What do you mean? I often had professional arguments with rivals on a building site. Difference is, I disagreed about wooden nails, not flesh and bones. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Fiddick. I'm just a regular guy waiting to get his arm fixed, so I can return to work and to my family. I was more curious about what you were doing before being hospitalized. I'm a carpenter, and a good one, too. But that means I need both arms to feed my family, Dr. Reed. Are you satisfied with your treatment here? Well, it's clear that I've chosen a bad time to be injured. Forgive my bluntness, but you seem overwhelmed by cases of the flu. I won't lie to you about it. I'm afraid we are. Are you sure you don't want to operate yourself, Dr. Reed? I have the feeling you're very capable. And your colleagues seem to think so too. In other circumstances, you would be right. But for now, I don't think I can take on the responsibility. My apologies. Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later. Good evening, Doctor. I believe we're going to be working together. Dr. Reed. Dr. Swansea informed us of your arrival, but I could not dare to believe we'd have such good fortune. Such an honor, sir. <laughs> Thank you. And you are? I am Thoreau Strickland, Dr. Thoreau Strickland. I'm a great admirer of your work, Dr. Reed. What can you tell me about the Pembroke? Well, it has always been an honor to work with Dr. Swansea. But with your arrival, I can't think of a better opportunity to learn about blood transfusion. Do you need help with anything in particular? Well, yes, maybe. I'm waiting for a batch of products I ordered for my personal research, yet my supplier seems to have vanished. Do you want me to play the arrow boy for you? Oh, no, Dr. Reed. But if you went personally to his shop, what well, with your reputation and all, he wouldn't dare to refuse the products I need. I see. Well, give me the address, for I may pass by if I have time. You seem quite optimistic. It's a rare and precious attitude in these difficult times. I'm convinced that this epic question's room... True, true. Please, could you tell me something about yourself? I'm a great admirer of your... What made you choose to be a doctor? I'm not ashamed to admit. It's always a pleasure to this epidemic. I based my tech rather not talk. As long as you're caught, you're not the first one. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I believe we're going to be colleagues. Reed? Yes, I've been... Does my arrival... Let us just say... It seems you have bad memories of your military service. I refuse to see this industrial... We can at least agree... I don't know what you... I don't question... And what exactly... I served in the... Be careful what... I only want... Knowledge has always been and will remain. It is not a question of initiative. It is a question of integrity. It 
If you have a problem with me, Dr. Ackroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice. The benefit of his position. But I don't agree with it. I know we've... Oh. Aren't you too old for such jealousy? It really won't do you any good, you know. Don't be ridiculous, Dr. Reed. Since your tenure... Let's just say... Carelessness. We're here to... I don't intend... Modern med... Tell me, Waverly. What do you think of Dr. Strickland's enthusiasm for his experimental research? Strickland is playing with his patients' lives for pride and glory. Now that, sir, is unethical. Are you thinking about... Harvey Fiddick needs delicate... Why do you wish to leave this surgery? I strongly believe that Mr. Fiddick should not be butchered to test an unproven procedure. If you are going to lead this surgery... I I'm not the kind of... And are you not afraid that your... Rivalry? Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. <coughs> I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon at the Pembroke Hospital. And who your name has... I beg you. What are you begging for? You keep calling... Well... Who are you really, Miss Howcroft? I mean, a part... Is that not enough? I'm curious... No, no such an... And why do you believe you're a vampire? I don't need to believe anything. It is what I am. It is what I feel within this... Hollow shell of flesh. Please, describe to me how you feel. What is it like? Oh, my coffee. I need to run out of coffee. I need to make another coffee and I need to go and get Mickey's, Siggy's paper. 